This might be the next UFC star in the bantamweight division for Australia. Welcome to the Australian MMA Podcast. My name is Mitch Tinley. I'm your host for the Australian MMA Podcast. Today's guest is competing, as it has recently been announced, for a UFC contract with Dana White Contender Series later on in the year. Cody Harden is a kid that has been destined for the UFC for more than 20 years. Uh, he was a kid that cried on his 18th birthday because he wasn't there yet. He's a kid that left high school at like year 9 and 10 for an quote-unquote apprenticeship uh, where basically he just trained. Uh, he has battled through injuries and illnesses uh, to finally get his opportunity uh, to compete alongside his teammate, Quillen Southkield at uh, Loestro Combat Academy for a UFC contract. Cody dives into his inju- injuries, his illnesses, uh, his MMA start, the trials, the tribulations. Uh, and there's also, uh, he also gives his thoughts on uh, the recent podcast I did with uh, Ben Vickers from Eternal MMA and just his side on uh, some of the comments said in that. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the man competing for a UFC contract on Dana White Contender Series. It's Cody Hatton. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the show, the man of the moment who has uh, recently announced that he has signed uh, for the most important job interview in all of mixed martial arts. He'll be competing for a UFC contract and Dana White Contender Series. Cody Hatton, welcome. How you going, Mitch? Yeah, still uh, flying the Hex flag, which they must love as the Hex bantamweight champion uh, going into this. You did have a... Fight scheduled on Beatdown Promotions 8, July 13th. Uh, that's now, I'm assuming, cancelled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one's, yeah, that one's cancelled. So, yeah, well, I won't be, I won't be doing that. <laughs> you were, the, the guy you were fighting, uh, please confirm, was he ranked 150th in Japan? Did you know anything about him? To be honest, uh, I didn't even, like, at this point, it's so hard to get a fight. I didn't even care. So <laughs> when I was just, Damo was just like, oh, yeah, we got you this guy. I was just like, yeah, whatever. And I actually watched no footage on him because, <laughs> yeah, it was just at that point, I would just try to focus on myself training. Uh, he was ranked up there. But, hey, I give him give him credit because, fuck, I asked literally Damo. You can go and ask this to Damo. Damo asked everyone in the country pretty much that, you know, thought was available and, you know, they were all unavailable or they couldn't do it for any reason. So then we went looking uh, to Asia and see if anyone over there would fight. And I got turned down by a 10 and one guy who trains out of the UFC Performance Institute in China. We really thought that that fight was actually going to go through. Uh, Couldn't see why if you're 10 and one, why you wouldn't take a fight. It'd be a big opportunity for him to come over here as well. Um, His coaches turned it down and said he wasn't on that skill level. So yeah, there's a couple other people with great records who were ranked, you know, in the top 10 in, in these countries. And they also all said no. You know, Damo literally had to take the first thing he could mm. get as he was so excited to get me a fight and I wanted to stay active. Um, and then, yeah, this this lad said that he'd do it. So it was like, hats off to him, you know. What do I do? You know, like people will say what they want. Oh, the guy was ranked 135 you're not, or 55, whatever. You not think I tried to get the best guys in Australia, New Zealand to fight and the best guys uh, in all these other countries too to fight. I've obviously fucking tried and they've said no. So what do I do? Sit on my ass and complain? No, I just take what I'm given, you know. So beggars can't be choosers. I just take whoever wants to step in there. So, yeah. Uh, Before we dive into that because i do want to obviously touch base on on some of the things that have been said previously uh about uh you in australian mma i'll start off with a positive uh mate since you were an embryo you have been training in mixed martial arts and you have finally now you've had your ups and downs and nobody knows just how hard it's been injuries fight wise but you truly have been training since you were a child to do this your dad may have done something illegal and gave in, given you an apprenticeship, which you basically just used to <laughs> train in mixed martial arts. But hey, it, it, it paid off. It paid off because you get you get the chance at a yeah. UFC contract. How good does it feel to finally get a chance at Dana White Contender Series? Yeah, I, it's a bit surreal, you know. It's, it's really fresh. But like, uh, yeah, I just feel worthy now, you know. Like my whole life I've been doing this shit. So... 
um, you know, it was I always believed in myself and people around me always believed that eventually I was going to do it. It's just a matter of when. And now that it's happened, I feel like I've made it already. And it's, that sounds stupid because I, <laughs> it's not like I'm in the UFC. I have to go and bash this dude and get in, you know? So, and I have to win in spectacular fashion too. Just winning doesn't mean you're in the UFC. Mm. You have to impress Dana. So yeah, I'm, I'm ready to do that. Um, but yeah, I feel, I, I literally feel like I've, I've made it. Like, so, <laughs> even though I haven't, I still have to go and prove myself, but um, yeah, I'm just grateful that I've got uh, offered this opportunity and um, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna seize the moment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take full advantage of that to display my skill set on the highest level uh, where I feel I do belong. Well, I've, we've never seen you not do well, not finish, not go hard. I mean, the last decision bout I think I remember was you versus Steve Ersig, and it was literally like fight of the year. Steve Ersig uh, then goes on to compete for UFC gold. So, I mean, that's aged really well. Um, but talk us through, I mean, you saw your teammate in a way, and, and if I will, Quillen Southfield, he almost lapped you in a weird way. And that's not like your fault entirely there's a lot of injuries and stuff that happened and and even in mma there's quite a quite a bit of luck in terms of matchups and opportunities and all that sort of stuff but talk about how it felt and give me the real answer of seeing a guy start mma later than you train with you and then get his opportunity before you it, be honest did it eat at you a little bit it didn't eat at me at the sense of as in oh, he's done it, what about me? It's more like, it's more, um, I started to think like, man, maybe the UFC just sleeping on me and I should just go elsewhere and try and fight on the PFL or Bellator and stuff or wherever, you know, mm. one or something. Mm. That was more my mindset it was like, maybe I shouldn't like, you know what I mean? You just, because it's hard with the UFC. You don't know until like, like there wasn't any sign. I was super surprised when when we got like an email saying, "Oh, you're on contender series. Will you fight this person?" I wasn't expecting it at all. It's like they left us on scene for like however long <laughs> and not gotten back to us. And so I was just kind of like, "Man, they're just sleeping on me." Oh well. Like I I was a bit bummed, but I'm also very very happy for like deep down like there's no like um animosity or like jealousy or anything like that i understand in this life we're all on different journeys we really are and when he got signed i was like fuck that's that's so great because i get to train with the guy <laughs> non-stop in the gym all the time and i know his level so that does great things for me also it's like when steve went off and did all these things in the ufc that made me feel great because i'm like fuck if i did that well against him that so early on in my career then um i can obviously hang with those guys too and i know that and i know everyone else knows that and now i'm just grateful that i am there and it's great that we're literally on like at similar time you know the same uh season of contender series we will both be on i think um not too long ago jazz was telling me that you know when when uh when when ramel found out that Quillen was on the contender series he was like super stoked for him but then he felt so I like upset for me because he was like, fuck, what about him? He's been wanting to do this his whole life. But but like, mm. yeah, I, I, I didn't see it like that. Like I knew Cullen was destined for it. it I, I actually believe that Cullen probably deserves it more than me um, because he got to display, like Blake Donnelly was like putting everyone away and then Cullen formed tense or however long it was, put him out. And then the next guy and then boom, domination, the next guy. And he was so active. I haven't been that active and yeah, that's been out of my control and, you know, I've been injured and had a couple of illnesses and all this bullshit, but I just think that like, yeah, like I said, everyone's on a different path, a different journey. And uh, I knew that it would eventually happen, but I just didn't think it would happen this quickly. Like I thought, man, I probably need like two, three, I, I say at least two more fights. That's why I was trying to um, fight on beatdown, And the plan was to, uh, you know, go back over to Hex and defend that belt at the end of the year, if available, or if if nothing available, go elsewhere. Um, so, yeah, like, I thought that I'd need, like, two more or so, but then when we got that, it was like, Jesus, like that? Like, there's no sign. It's crazy. They don't give you any sort of, like, oh, yeah, like, no notice or nothing. It's just like, will he fight on this date against this guy? Boom, yes or no? And it's like, 
uh yeah <laughs> anyone <laughs> yeah you know it's just fucking crazy bro so yeah, yeah i'm just um yeah i'm just like speechless about it all i feel like my whole life hasn't gone to waste you know so uh, i've had doubts before and i've been like man have i fucking wasted my whole life trying to pursue this fucking one thing and it's, i'm <laughs> never gonna get the chance like imagine that that would be i can't even that would just be like an absolute waste. So now that I've been given this opportunity, I just feel like everything I've done since I've been, I've been wanting to fight in the UFC since I was six years old. That's the reality of it. So I turned 26 this year. It's nearly 20 years I've been wanting to get there. That's all I've ever wanted to do. I remember in school when we get given like projects of like, you know, things you're into. I do like big fucking write-ups about the UFC and like year, grade three and like people wouldn't even know what that is. And I'm talking about like they had no rules and they were headbutting and like grabbing each other's nuts <laughs> and shit. And people are like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's like, I wanted to do it, bro. This was this like for so long. So um, I'm just grateful that I've been given the opportunity, man. And like, yeah, who, whoever's up there is looking after me because yeah, to get an opportunity is just like, I feel like I've made it. Like I said before, I still have to go out there and mm. show everyone what I'm capable of, but I'm ready for it. Like, this is what I've done. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. Just give me one shot and I'll show you what I can do. I'll do some damage. So I'm super excited, man. That's that's what I like about Because I've talked to a few people that have obviously gotten on the Data White Contender Series and they're almost like, oh, oh job's not done yet. You know, I'm not going to celebrate. Job's not done. I think it's like weirdly refreshing that you are actually celebrating the moment. And it it comes in not a sense of going, oh, this is the peak, this is good enough, but you've got this scary confidence that you're like, no, I'm celebrating because I know I'm going to win and I know I'm going to like show out and they're going to give me a contract. Like It's this weird belief that you've got. I mean, you even have recounted the story many times of when you turned 18, you cried because you weren't the UFC oh. yet. Yeah, I was shattered. Yeah, when I, yeah, 18 years old, was in the car with my grandma, and I just started crying on the way home. She was dropping me home. She's like, What's the matter? What's the matter? You know, like, it's your birthday. You know, I was like, I'm not in the UFC yet. Like, what am I, you know, I wanted to be like the youngest fucking champion, you know, like, I'm like, yeah, just the, the, I don't even think the cage was fucking back at that point yet in, in Perth. So I couldn't even fucking compete in it. But, um, they were doing it in a ring. I didn't even know that there was any promotion going on at the time. Like it was just so small here, and it was like, yeah, it takes us took us ages to catch on to it. But yeah, now I yeah I feel that's the thing though is like I feel super excited and I feel like wow my whole life's not gone to waste. But at the, at the same time, man, it's like um, even to get there, you think about there's like a hundred people in the fucking world, right? Uh, sorry. 100 people 100 fighters dana white choose or the ufc choose to compete on contender series per season not 100 people in the world you get what i mean 100 people they choose to compete and it's like i'm one of them to me that's making it like mm. i don't know i feel like i've made it you know what i mean so i could go there and get fucking rinsed and then it's like oh shit well that was the highlight but that's not gonna happen i've trained my whole life for this mm. so I know that that's not possible. So, and if you watch any of my fights, it's always going to be fireworks. I don't mm. come to fuck around. And I think Dana likes that. And I'll be able to go out there and, and um, like do what I do best. And that's being, in, being an exciting fighter. And I'm always looking for a finish. And even the fight that I lost to Steve Ursig, literally fight of the year. So I'm going to go out there and, and not waste any time and be looking to do damage at any moment I can. So since that fight with Steve Ersig, uh, you've done a lot of training together. Um, kind of two parts to this question. Did you have to swallow any of your ego to go and train with Steve? And then how good has it been to see his rise? And obviously when you've mixed it up with him, you go, oh, wow, I can hang with a guy that has fought for UFC gold. I swallowed my ego when he beat me on the night, to be honest. <laughs> I went backstage after the fight. I cried. And then I came to the realization there's someone better than me. And um, then I was like, fuck, well, well, it is what it is. I did my absolute best. What else can you ask of yourself? I've gotten better since then, obviously. So has he. And uh, yet yeah, now it's like, it's the best thing ever to be able to go train with him. It's like, I literally have the fucking second best guy in the world around <laughs> the corner to train with, you know, it's like, 
yeah, no. So I, like I said, I swallowed my ego on the night when I lost. And, you know, since then I was like, man, well, I have to go. Cause there, I, there was a bit of talk like, oh, maybe a rematch at flyweight. And it's like, man, I'm not going to flyweight. I'm not, <laughs> flyweight, you know? Um, so and then it just made sense to train with each other because it's like, there's no conflict of interest there. He's a flyweight. I'm, I'm a bantamweight. I'm not going to flyweight. And I don't think he's going to bantamweight anytime soon. And even if he did go now, he's well beyond like where I am um, like career wise that we would never fight like again, really. And I, I wouldn't actually want to fight him again either um, because I know how hard it is. <laughs> we, 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 we fight <laughs> when we, when we spar, it's like I'll fight but for five rounds and that's fucked. So yeah, I mean, I don't really want to do that either. You know, so <laughs> yeah, it's um, I'm just grateful that um, we're actually, we have like, trained with each other and and we both learn so much and i think it's um a big a big plus of that is like i've always been um the smallest guy in the gym so to have mm. someone that's like your size or even slightly smaller it's like a dealing with their speed that's something that i'm not used to you know mm. like dealing with someone because it's all like oh well you know if he can if he can be a good training partner for someone who's like a lightweight or a welterweight then it's like imagine what he do to people his size it's like yeah well people his size move a lot faster than a lightweight and welterweight and steve moves very very fast so mm. um you know it doesn't it does translate but it doesn't as well so yeah just just having him there as a training partner to like after the sparring we we share knowledge with each other oh you did this well oh how did you do that oh i did that when you did this it's mm. like just camaraderie now it's it's like yeah i i i want him to do well and he wants me to do well and that's it there's no there's no like animosity people ask me all the time oh like family and oh i bet you'd love to fight steve again i'm like mm, not really man it's like now that we've started training and exchanging knowledge with each other i feel like once you exchange knowledge with someone there's a level of trust there and to go fight that person it just feels horrible now it's like we're both helping each other build up and get better and then to fight each other it's like yeah i try not to want to think about anything like that you know so yeah did it did it hurt at the time to have a flyweight sort of come up and and beat you and did, was there a moment where you went oh shit maybe i'm maybe i'm because at, at the time he's not ursig that fought for the ufc gold you know what i mean we're mm. just regionally in australia was there a bit of you that went man a flyweight just came up and beat me like maybe i'm not going to make it to the ufc yeah for sure um that was definitely yeah i definitely i definitely thought that and then um you know i i started then i started working with like dietitian and stuff and and I just said, like, you know, what am I? Am I a flyweight or am I a bantamweight? And then they said, they got me to do a bunch of scans and shit. And then they said, no, no, you're a bantamweight. Like, I can get you to flyweight, but I can't get you there and say you're going to perform. You're going to lose a bunch of muscle mass, this and that. But also at that time, without working with, like, a nutritionist and dietitian, like, I used to walk around at, like, 65 kilos. and But I used to eat fuck all as well. Um, So it was way too light. Now I sit up like way heavier than that and the cut is still just as, like as easy, you know, so because I'm doing it the right way. So back then when I fought Steve, I'd imagine on the night, we're probably the same way. Like I don't think there would have been like on the night, I don't know what the commission, but we're probably the same way on the night, man. So, I mean, yeah, I, that was kind of scary. I was like, fuck, well, I know some of these bantamweights, especially internationally, they're fucking huge. So i got to get uh, a bit bigger, which I've spent time to do now. And I eat a lot more. I feel myself properly. Mm. And I am a bigger, as time has gone on, I have like filled out a bit more and become a bigger bantamweight as mm. well. Um, so, but then also when Steve went and did what he did, I was like, I didn't just lose to a flyweight. I <laughs> lost to the second best. And I would even argue that man, he could have won that fight, the best fucking mm. flyweight in the world. And Weight divisions, yes, is a thing. But you look at, like, I don't know, someone like De uh, Davison Figueredo, right? He mm. just went up and then fought Cody Garbrandt yeah. and fucking, like, minced him. So mm. he's a big flyweight, but he's a flyweight and you just beat a bantamweight. So it's like there is, obviously, there's all this stuff saying, like, Cody's not what he was before and this and that and, you know, he's on the way or whatever. Yeah. But um, you get this all the time. You get like flyweights coming up and, you know, they just don't cut as much weight and then they just better fighters. Like how many fighters have moved up in weight and then actually done better? Like Rob Whitaker, 
these types of people. Yeah. They literally went up and then started doing better. So there's that as well, you know, that I have to stand on too. So, and as well, man, it's like that fight, it's like I took it on three weeks notice. Steve was preparing for a title fight. I, it was my third MMA fight, like professionally. Um, I wasn't really wrestling at the time. There was a lot, man. Like since then I've learned so much and um, yeah, there's, there's a lot, like no excuses. He beat me fair and square. Um, and yeah, I, it just showed me that how much better I needed to get. Mm. And, and even, even him going and doing well, like, um, uh, in the UFC against like the, the, the number one guy in the world, that was even like, man, even Steve couldn't be that guy. That's how good they are. I need to get <laughs> even that much better, you know? So that's the way I looked at that because people started saying to me, oh, well, you know, you had a good fight with him and he had a good fight with mm you know, the number one guy mm. in the world or whatever, this and that. How do you feel? You must feel amazing. I was like, not really. It means I need to get that much better. <laughs> like, fuck, that's, that's how much better can I get? You know, I'm trying my fucking best here, right? You know, like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the answer to that question. <laughs> no, it, yeah, it, yeah. Do, you, do you look at any UFC fighters now and go, man, I think I'm better than you right now? Yeah, heaps. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of fighters out there that I'd be comfortable. I'd be like, yeah, I could take them for sure. Like some people I see who get in now, sometimes I'm like, how is this guy in the UFC? But this is not all, <laughs> this is not all the time. I'm not saying this is like, I'd say this is like 5% of like, or even less. Sometimes you just see a fight. Maybe they've stepped in on short notice or something against someone like the guy who fought Sean O'Malley like that time mm. with the blue hair or whatever. It's like, yeah, he doesn't deserve to be there. I don't think. And he got cut. Like, that wasn't rocket science, you know? There's so many fighters I look at and go, yeah, I can beat them for sure, you know? So, yeah, that's never a doubt, you know? And seeing what Steve's done is kind of, even though it is bad to wait and fly away, it kind of proves that because, like, skill is skill, right? Mm. You know, skill is skill. And, like, he's displayed his skill. And, obviously, we train together all the time. Um, and we fought each other and it was a close fight and it was evenly matched. And, you know, it's, I know that my skills up there, you know, that's for sure. No doubt. Now talk us through what it was like telling your family that you had got this chance for Dana White Contender Series. Obviously they've, they've heard you uh, just ramble on for 20 years about mixed martial arts and you finally got to be like, Hey, look, it's, it, it's worth it. Yeah, they were, they were just all crying. They're all just bawling, just like yeah, I thought my mum my mum and my sister, I thought they were I have a sister by the way. I always talk about my brothers and I don't <laughs> I don't mention my sister much, but I do have a younger sister. So anyone out there <laughs> she'll appreciate this because I never <laughs> mention her and she gets <laughs> upset. <laughs> but yeah, anyone out there, don't yeah, stay away from her. Um <laughs> so uh yeah, no, they were just both crying. They were like, I can't believe it. Oh, my God, no way. Like, they just, I thought, yeah, I think they're still crying now, to be <laughs> honest. They're just still crying. Every time I speak to them, they're just like, I can't believe it, Cody. You've done. It's like where I come from and what I've gone through in my life, just getting to the Contender Series, I've made it. Mm. That's all I'm saying is like, and they think, I'm literally they're like, that's it. You're going to be a fucking superstar now. We all knew it was coming, but now it's actually it. And it's just very overwhelming for them. But um, at the same time, they always knew it was coming. So, yeah, it's, yeah. And everyone I tell, they just lose their absolute shit because that's literally my identity, dude. Like, since a kid, everyone's known me as, oh, this kid, Cody, he's like, he's a fighter. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he fights people and this and that. And, I remember even school teachers telling me like, oh, you have a backup plan at all? And I'm like, none. They're like, well, what happens if you get a major injury? There's no backup plan. This is it for me. This is all I'm doing. That's it. There's nothing else that's happening. That's all I want to do. And that's all I'm going to do until as long as I can do it for. Um, there is no backup plan. So everyone has known that. So when I've told these people who finally that I've got a shot, fuck man they're all just going nuts they're like celebrating already which is crazy because i have to still go and fight and impress you know but they have no, <laughs> yeah. they have they have no doubt that i'm gonna seize it and i'm gonna i'm gonna take full advantage of being under the bright lights on the biggest stage in the world and 
yeah, I can't wait to do that too, man. It's going to be, fuck, it'll be a hectic story, you know, so I can't wait. It really is. And what I like about it the most is it's now technically not illegal what your dad did because that it, it kind of has worked. It was an apprenticeship technically. So now- <laughs> My apprenticeship started at six, mate. <laughs> I was the youngest tradie ever. <laughs> oh my so look, I, I think I don't I don't think they can chase you back for twenty years, but so Said it straight. He actually signed you up to be like to help him out, didn't he? And then he literally just said, Go and train. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It was like uh I remember it was in year nine and um you know, I went I had to go to the like office of the school and apply for some sort of exemption to like leave school to do an apprenticeship. And then um they were my dad was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they called him and he was like, Yeah, yeah, he's gonna do an apprenticeship with me, this and that. And then pretty much they gave me the papers to fill out. And then I took them home. My dad didn't fill them out. And then when a like, couple of months later, they're like, oh, did you get those forms? And I was like, yeah, I handed them in. And they were like, oh, really? And they're like, yeah, they're somewhere there. I definitely handed them in. So, oh, okay. And then like, well, we can't find those papers. I was like, no, no, I definitely handed them in. And then pretty much I just didn't show up the next year. I literally just didn't show up next year. That was it. <laughs> didn't go. Year 10, <laughs> I didn't go. That was it. Year 9, done. That's it. This is the worst <laughs> You know, there was never anything of that. And then I did some landscaping, which was a little bit less like, there is some heavy machinery there, but it wasn't like full time. It was like three times a week or four times a week. Sometimes I'd work five times a week, but they would always let me finish at like 2.30 so that I could go train. And I'd often go run in the morning before that as well and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, completely illegal, but yeah i mean it's all it's all worked out now (laughs) (laughs) no it's 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 definitely good um any kids that are listening don't do that don't don't do that but geez it's about to let me watch let me watch them fight first and i'll (laughs) I'll let you know if you should you should continue fighting or you know or don't or not do that. <laughs> oh mate, it's look, it is it is great. It's great to see you've been like the the future for so long to the point where you became the present and it was almost getting to a point like when is this gonna happen? Because it wasn't skill, it was injuries and sickness and all that sort of stuff. So it's good that you've gotten a bit of activity back in, you've got a huge opportunity. Um before I, I do sort of let you go. I would kind of be remiss if I didn't give you sort of the opportunity to retort a little bit. Um, We did have Ben Vickers on the podcast uh, a little while ago. Uh, Did you listen to that interview? And I really, (laughs) honestly, I don't want to stir up too much shit or anything like that. But it just, you when someone says like, oh, we can't sort of have Cody on because of like, security concerns because his fans are so rowdy and, and, and things like that. And the fact that they offered you fights. Um, did you have any comments on that interview at all? Yeah. The UFC going to have to up their security. So 
Yeah. No. <laughs> um, on that, um, no, like, to be honest, I think it's bullshit. So I'm just going to say it straight out. I think, yeah, I had people messaging me saying, oh, my God, you see what this guy said about you. Um, I listened to it. it it's, it's like, it's not as bad as, you know, it's not as bad as I'm making it out to be. As, it's not that bad. I didn't really say it, but the whole thing about paying $5,000 for the extra security, I don't know, man. The way I see it is like, the cops got to be there anyway. Like, uh, you know, so I feel like, yeah, you pay, you pay security guards, like, but the police, he said he had to pay for the police, but police have to be there anyway. It's their job. And I don't think he's paying them. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, but the way I see it is police have to be there anyway. And don't the police get paid by the government? So I don't know. I think that's a lot of shit, really. Um, like nothing against. I just think that, yeah, that's not true. Um, yes, I do have rowdy fans and people know that. Um, but I mean, come on, $5,000 on extra security for that? Like, I just can't see how, like, how many people did you need? Like, I just can't work out. I just think that's not true. Um, the real reason why I haven't been on internal lately uh, is because I couldn't get matched up. You know, whenever Rod was matched up, um, obviously he couldn't fight. But then around that, like you asked Cam and Ben, or Cam, because that's who I dealt with, last year I actually said to them that I would sign an exclusive, before I fought Raja, I said to them that I would sign an exclusive deal if they could get me two fights in six months. And Jazz has all the records for this. If they can get me two fights in six months, I'll sign. And they went, they asked a bunch of people. I'm not going to say any names of people who turned me down, but pretty much I got turned down literally by anyone who you've already thought of. They probably turned me down. Or they were unavailable, this and that, whatever, right? Which, all good, man. Like, but no, yeah, no problem. So they couldn't get me a fight. So I said, well, look, if you can't get me a fight, I'm going to have to go and fight over on Hex because they've got a guy that will fight me. And that was Raja. And then there was a bit of, you know, back and forth. And I said, right, well, I can't be in limbo, you know, in a state where, oh, five, we got your fight potentially on this guy, maybe, and, and kind of waiting for a fight. I said, fuck it. Well, they've got a definitive opponent ready to go. I went over there and, and, and fought Raja for the interim title. So that was simple as that. I've never turned down a fight. That's absolute bullshit. Never turned down a fight. I've been unavailable due to being injured or being sick, having an illness, or that date not being um like not being able to do on that date for whatever reason. But I've never turned down a fight with anyone. So the only time when there's been a fight offered to me and I couldn't do it was the first time they offered me to fight Rod. It was after I fought Jarrett Wilbraham. In that fight, I actually hurt my arm. He armbarred me and I fucked up my uh elbow a little bit and then shortly after that end up getting sick and then they said something like would you fight rod and i know the exact time but it was like four weeks time. i was like look i haven't even been in the gym training my arm's been fucked for like three four weeks so i'm not going to be ready for that whatever it was and then that was it and then from then I didn't really hear from them it was like because i said i wouldn't fight rod in that day because i wasn't ready to go didn't really hear anything uh from them and so then i was like all right well could, looking for a fight couldn't get a match up and then that's when uh, i fought the guy on rogue uh jack jenkins matched me up with this guy same thing he struggled to get me a fight he asked everyone they all said no you can ask jack he'll tell you that so they got this guy in yes he wasn't ranked in the top whatever but he had some balls on him and he fought me you know so there's been a lot of talk about oh he's you know look who we've matched our guys up with and then look who's Cody's fighting it's like no one will fight me man that is the they know that like so don't say that I turned down fights and don't say that oh we can't have them on because it costs us too much money I bring 200 people there every single time I fight I make them money it doesn't cost them like even if it costs them a little bit I still make them money like I bring 200 people there have you been to one of my fights on Eternal Half the fucking crowd is there for me. Like, and then let alone how many fucking uh, pay-per-views, uh, whatever mm. it is, the, the before Fight Pass was around or whatever, all that shit. People buy that and, man, if anything, I make the money. I do, I bring people there to watch me fight. And promoters should like that. But so, look, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. If I can just like, I do have to kind of, at least from their perspective, 
Safety is also a concern too. And as much as I love your fans, I love how rowdy they are. <laughs> Did two of your friends or brothers or brother's friends not fight each other in the crowd? Yeah, they did. Yeah, that that's true. <laughs> you can, that but true. you can see, you can see how like <laughs> the protection of the other crowd, the look of it, the vibe, like whatever it, whatever it is, you can see how maybe Ben goes, okay, I'm gonna pay extra money because we need more security, or maybe the cops need to do a bit more of a walkthrough. I don't know, like that. But can you see that maybe the heightened money that they have to means less money they're going to get and heightens the risk of maybe problems. Maybe a riot breaks out and then 90% of the crowd never want to come to an eternal event again. Like, can you at least understand? And he, he even said, it's not, it's not you. Like it's, it's just the, and I can confirm this. I've been at most of your fights in the ring just as scared just because they're so rowdy and passionate and I love them. But as a promoter, can you see the aspects that he's concerned with yeah. at all? Yeah, look, I like, yeah, 100%. I, I, I understand, you know, and uh, I have nothing against Ben and Cam at all. Nothing against them at all. The only thing that I'm, the only thing I wasn't happy about is just uh, what they've said uh, what uh, uh, Ben said that I turned down fights and this and that and it's like I, like as if I'm avoiding people and I chose to go elsewhere it's like I didn't chose choose to go I did choose to go elsewhere but that's because you guys couldn't get me a fight so they're trying to sell the whole sign with us exclusivity but it's like okay you sign with them and then what happens you don't get them a fight you're stuck so yeah sorry I didn't answer your question but <laughs> yeah, I see where he's coming from. Look, yeah, they are rowdy. And yes, after the Steve fight, two of my fans fought each other in the crowd. <clears throat> they actually <laughs> they actually agreed, though, we're not going to fight yet until Cody's done, and then we're going to fight. Oh, so sorry, what? At least, they had, <laughs> at least they had the courtesy to do that. <laughs> there was pretty much two people who didn't like each other that had a bit of a problem a couple of weeks ago. And then, obviously, when I fight, all my fans sit together, but they're both from the area, and had a bit of drama a few weeks ago There's like groups within groups i guess and then uh yeah one of them was like yeah i'm gonna punch this guy after the fight so just but i'm not gonna wreck it for cody whilst he's fighting so when That's he's nice. done i'm gonna hit him so yeah at least i had the courtesy for that but <laughs> i mean this was i feel like the last time i fought jared on the show i don't think there was a problem and that was that is the most recent time i think my fans weren't too bad that time so, I don't know, man. I feel like you go on a fight show, yeah, people are going to be a bit rowdy. But the only time it's been rowdy, to be honest, with my brothers and all of that and my friends, it's only, like, out the front with the police. Like, not actually inside. The inside fights, are, yeah, there was one and the Steve time with each other. And, yeah, they if they sit cage side, they go a bit nuts. But, I mean, it's a fight show, man. Like, fuck, people are... Like, I don't know, man. It's, I just think it's, I just think, look, if I'm selling 200 tickets and there happens to be a little scuffle and the security got to kick a couple people out, I've just sold 200 tickets. Like, who gives a fuck? You know, yeah. that's, that's the way I, I look but, at it. But couldn't you sell you know? 100 tickets and not have those people there? I mean, yeah, it's like, I can't choose who wants to come and it's support fair. me, you know? Look, yeah, it's it's like, fair. Yeah, I it's... understand. But no, no, this is the problem is <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that I I understand where Ben's coming from, but he was making it out on that podcast is like, that's why I haven't been, you even asked him, why is it Cody and Rod mm. for? And then he said about three things and none of them were true reason why I didn't go is I didn't want to didn't want to sign exclusively because they couldn't match me up. And the only time they offered me the rod fight was this one time when I was unavailable. And because I couldn't take it, I think they just got a bit salty. That's it. And I'm just saying it how it is. And I have nothing against Eternal, but to say I turned down fights and, you know, I'm fighting some uh, guy that's not even ranked from Japan and look what we do with our guys and this and that. It's like, do you not think I've tried to fight the best guys in the country? Like, you know, I've tried, you know, but I'm in a position where 
it's a nightmare to get me in a matchup. So but the only thing I was unhappy in that podcast was a couple of things that he said that I didn't think were true. So I don't think that the fans being rowdy is valid enough reason to not have me on the card because I think that the amount of tickets I sell outweighs that. Um, and actually, the last time that I fought against Jarrett on Eternal, my fans were in check. I don't think there was any dramas that time. Everyone was kind of in check. Yeah, they look a bit scary maybe, but that was about it. Like, there was no dramas. It was that maybe out in front they were carrying on a bit, but it's this out front. It's not in the venue, you know? So people yeah. drink. They, they turn into fuckwits. You know what it's like. Yeah. Everyone turns into a fuckwit. You're selling alcohol in a fucking fight show, you know? It's like, what, of course people are going to get a bit of, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, I don't know. Look, I have nothing I, against the man. Like, yeah, I have nothing. I, like, I have nothing against them. And I was happy. Like I said, I was happy to sign um, with them for like six months if they got me two fights, but they couldn't get me the fight. So then I went elsewhere. But he could have just said that. But instead, he had to say, oh, Cody turned down fights and uh, Cody's fans are too rowdy. That's why I can't have him on. And Cody did this. Is like none of that's the fans thing is true, but that's not the reason why I haven't been on. The reason I haven't been on is because they couldn't get me the fights. And so I went elsewhere. What do I do? Sit and wait around? Like, that's it. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I, th- anyway. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think it turns into, because it is, it, it, it will end up just going like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Um, I think what actually ends up happening is, you know, people are, look at me not stirring. Look at me trying to mediate for once. Um, uh, I, no, it's a, I, what's I, happened? I think, oh, no, I've changed. Um, <laughs> no, I, th- I think it's because it's like, you know, someone offers you a fight, you have an injury, right? Or, or something like it's it's not the right time, right? And then the time you're ready to fight, they maybe have moved on. And then, so then you have two people that are like, oh, he's not fighting, but he wasn't injured. But so we don't know why we got him. And then they're like, you're not booking me. And I don't know why. And, and then, you know, like you said, you bring in 20, 30 grand, whatever it is worth of, 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 of ticket sales. And then there's a scuffle out the front and it scares away 10,000 other dollars of people. And it's like, none of that is your fault though. Like not, none of it, none of it. And it's like, but I can see the concern as like a, as, as a business trying to sort of mitigate risk. Cause that's what you have to do. And I think you can understand that. And when it comes to fights, yeah. I don't think promoters, fighters, coaches were never going to get it right. Like it just yeah. it, like his and his duty is to, and he even said it like eternal fighters, like as in people that are there kind of all yeah. like for a longer period of time, which you were at, at a point in time before yeah. you sort of taken some opportunities elsewhere. And then at the same time, your duty is to you and your career. So it's like, I think it is one yeah. of those ones where it's like, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to to respond. I probably will leave it there. Like, I'm not going to go back to Ben or, or anything like that. It just, uh, I think it's like an agree to disagree type, type moment. But it's like, I wanted to give you an opportunity to sort of, because it's not, I'm not saying Ben said this. You saw the interview. Everyone else can watch yeah. the interview. And I wanted to just give you an yeah. opportunity to say your piece too. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, and everyone's gonna see this and see what I've said, and yeah, it's like take what you want with it. I don't really care who believes what or whatever. It just, yeah, like I said, like for me, fighting on Eternal is great. I get paid good because I sell a lot of tickets. I don't have to go anywhere. Um, you know, it's like twenty minutes from my house. I can. I don't have to pack my shit, get on a plane, none of that. I love, I love fighting on Eternal. Like. I, and I have a lot of fans here that want to come and watch me fight. I love fighting in the tournament. Um, yeah, I loved it. I have nothing against those guys. I just took took opportunities elsewhere, and I didn't want to sign exclusive because I didn't want to not be able to get the fights. So that's what I did what was best for me in my career, and that's fine, you know. Just, yeah, don't say that I've turned down fights because I haven't turned down anyone. Everyone knows that, so. That's the only thing I was unhappy with, but yeah. Have Have you reached out to him at all? No, haven't. No. Will you? No. Um, probably not, unless he reaches out to me. Um, like you know, if he, I don't know. I yeah, it's, we haven't really spoke, man. In, in late, in, yeah, as of late, it hasn't. We haven't even. 
he even said that on the podcast. We haven't smoked. I uh, spoke. Mm. Haven't been. I haven't like been really like you said. You're only paying attention to fighters that are you know in the eternal circle, really. Um. So I haven't. Yeah, I haven't spoke. But like, I love the like. There's a lot of guys there, man. That like I'm um, would consider I'm um, friends with. You know. So like you know, Mini T trains a good friend of mine. Um. You know, I would like to say that like. I also get along with Jack Della, Josh Della, those guys there. Even Jack Becker, I like him a lot too. Mm. Um, you know, he's always been good to me. I like ev- everything. There's no animosity there. I'm just, all I'm saying is, um, like, from my perspective, when it came out, I just I just can't agree with the things he's saying, that, it, that that's why I haven't been on Eternal. So, yeah, I mean, the security... This is definitely a problem and it's a shame. And I try to tell everyone every time, hey, you can't, <laughs> don't get too fucking rowdy, you know, like keep your shit together. And when you're done, leave, like stop this shit. It needs to stop. I tell them, I tell them, you know, every time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm in there fighting. So it's not really my responsibility <laughs> yeah. to run out and be like, oi, keep it down. I'm not on yet, you know? So <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Nothing like yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, spoke to him or nothing like that. Mm. But yeah, I'm I'm mutual, so yeah. yeah, I'm mutual with them. Well, hopefully you guys can reach out at some point and and sort it out or not. Um, I'm coming from this weird holistic. <laughs> I'm coming from this weird holistic <laughs> stage because all of a sudden I've, I like me and Ben have this big chat and I'm like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't stir shit. Maybe we should all get along. And there's, there's like a lot of wholesomeness in it. I mean, yeah. very similar to me though, mate. You, you in a way started your career there as well. I mean, you talked about me. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I was ringing, I ringing out to that fight. That whole thing happened, and I was like, "Who is this kid?" And you beat like a Muay Thai legend, and I was like, "And then the legend of Cody Haddon was born." Yeah, I'm I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful for them, and even giving me the opportunity i'm great i'm super grateful for them having me on the promotion and like you know getting me the fights and giving me a bit of a name and giving me a platform to shine on i'm grateful for all of that you know i really am and i appreciate them both ben and cam i appreciate them and like i said it's mutual between us like at the end of the day in, in recent time it's just been i've just been had to do what's best for me in my career and progressing forward and you know in in the future, who knows what's going to happen? But yeah. like for now, we're mutual. Everything's all good, and I'm very grateful. Um, you know, so yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Cody Haddon, before I before I do let you go, do we have a date? Do we have an opponent? Do we have a when can we expect to see this uh very important job interview? That's all confidential. That I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> 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 you can ask again but it's going to be the same answer <laughs> if you were did you read the west australian the little write-up yeah that would be the most information that you'll get so awesome. whatever's in there that's Bloody that's what are, you, what are you going through the west australian for mate i work for channel 7 too <laughs> come on bro uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. it's just, um, to be honest, I can't remember. I haven't read it, so I don't know what that actually said on there. So I'm kind of like, maybe look there. Yeah. Because you can't, because <laughs> you can't read because you left at nine. You're yeah. nine. <laughs> Probably. The only book, yeah. The only book I've read is like the Mike Tyson book. And Ooh. like, yeah, it took me about fucking three years to read it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate. Well, big, but... You only need to read three letters, and that is you. FC Cody Harden, mate. Best of luck. Uh, we can't wait to to see you finally get what you bloody deserve. Uh, is there anything? Because I probably won't talk to you again until either the lead up to the fight or the other side of the fight. Is there anything that you want anyone to know who has been following this 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 twenty year journey? Yeah, just um, big thank you to everyone who's always believed in me, and um, you know anyone who's uh, had anything to do with me I really appreciate you all my sponsors my gym you know like I've had a couple of special people in my life that have helped me out and you know without these type of people uh, you know who you are I wouldn't have been able to do this you know so from coaches to other people that do things in the background that you know without all of them none of this would be possible so 
I'm just very grateful um, to have the support. And um, yeah, I won't let my life go to waste. I'm going to go in there and, and show everyone what I'm capable of and represent uh, WA, Perth, and Karamam also, 6031 on the world stage. So let's go. Thanks, mate. Uh, best of luck and, uh, and talk to you next time. Sweet. You're the best, bye.